In the last video, we discussed that Couch's integral formula has the form integral of some function of f of z over z minus a dz is equal to 2 pi i times the function evaluated at that point a where a is basically the point that gives us a pole or a singularity for this function so that's the one point that this function is not analytic at and this is going to be how we calculate it directly and there's an extension of this theorem of this formula that says that what happens when we have something that is a pole of a higher order so basically what a pole is a pole is just a point on a singularity so it's any any value of z in the denominator that would make this undefined so for example this particular function we have a pole that is called a pole of order one because order means the 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 lowest possible power that we can express this as so this is power of one so we say of order one and the value is z equals to zero because if we put z equals to zero here this becomes undefined so we get a singularity so that's what the definition we use and we're going to use the word pole more often than singularities now because poles are, are the the, um, the term that are used a lot more in resi the residue theorem which is what we will cover in the next video so we have a pole of order 1 and z equals to 0. But what happens when you have a pole of a higher order? So you may have something like z, um, z square minus 3 or something like that. Or actually z square plus 3. Well, you know that essentially you can keep, you can continue to simplify this using complex numbers. So you can have i square root of 3, z minus i square root of 3. So even though this seems like a pole, a pole of order 2, because we have that square term there, we can simplify this into two poles of order 1 each, because we can use partial fractions now to separate this into two fractions. But in general, if you have something like this, z squared, now obviously you cannot really um, simplify that further, or if you have something like z squared, z minus 1, this is a pole of order 2, this is a pole of order 1, so obviously you need to take that into account. So what happens when you have a pole of higher order? You have something like z minus a to the power something like n plus 1 dz. What is this going to be equal to? Well, this is a really interesting thing because it tells you, Cauchy's theorem tells you that this is going to be equal to 2 pi i times the, f the, rib the nth derivative. So if we have an n plus 1 order pole here, we're going to take the nth derivative of this function and evaluate it at a. And then we're going to divide that result by n factorial. So what does that mean? Well, it, this is very similar to this, but we have now extended the definition to something like this. So if you have something where you have a pole of order 2, you can now apply this formula to find that. So let's have a look at how we can apply that to solve a few examples. Hopefully you understand what poles are now. We, we, by pole, we just mean a singularity, and we just mean the order is just the, the lowest power that you can express it as. If you can simplify it further, then good for you. But if you can't, then you just assume that's the uh, order of the pole. So let's have the following integral. Let's have the curve set equals to 8. So that's just a, a circle of radius 8 centered at the origin. And we're going to have the function e to the 2 set over z plus 1 to the power of 4. So we're going to have this function. So now, what do we recognize about this? This has a singularity at z equals to minus 1. So our, our a is going to be minus 1 in this case. And then the function itself is e to the power of 2z. And now we our n plus 1, our n plus 1 is going to be equal to 4, which means that n has to be equal to 3. So if we plug those values into this formula, we're going to get 2 pi i f of 3. So the third derivative of this function evaluated at point minus 1. And then n factor is going to be 3 factorial, which is 6. So now we need to evaluate the third derivative of this function here. So let's set f of z equals to e to the 2 z. And now the first derivative is going to be 2 second derivative 2z we're going to have 4 e to the 2z and then the third derivative let's have 3 
primes 8 e to the 2 set so if we plug that in here we're gonna get 2 pi i on 6 times the function evaluated at minus 1 so we have 8 e to the minus 2 so that's the value we have there and we can essentially leave it as that because remember that um, what else can we do? Well, obviously we can simplify this further. So let's have 8 over 3 pi i e to the minus 2. So let's leave our answer in exact form. So this is going to be the value of this integral. And we just saw that we can use this really, really interesting and really useful extension of Cauchy's integral formula so that for any pole of order n plus 1, we can actually find it by using this simple formula. All we need to do is differentiate the function at all. And if we remember from a previous video, we explained that when it comes to differentiating functions of a complex variable, we can do the, the, the differentiation in the same way we would with a real variable. This doesn't really change. So this is a really neat formula. And we can do a, a few more examples, but for now I'm going to leave it here because what we're going to be looking at in the next video is called the residue theorem. It's, and it's probably the most important generaliz generalization of Cauchy's uh, theorem to solving integrals of a function of a complex variable.